<sighs> July 6, 2018. Uh, I want to go over the potatoes a bit today. Got some stuff to discuss regarding those. Um, also, today is three years since my cat Dios died, so rest in peace, my good friend. Um, so, uh, let's take a look at the Yukon Gold potatoes in the upper row here first. Uh, you can see we do have a potato bug infestation here. These are the larvae. They're in here eating all the leaves. Hate these little guys. <laughs> um, they are starting to, obviously starting to desecrate even these plants, which were super healthy. Um, mm, these plants were not treated. Uh, I tried a treatment. Um, I had a discussion with a person I know in the field of agronomy, and they said that there was a potential that I could beat the Colorado potato bugs with a combination of something similar to molasses and boron. Um, now this is not recommended advice uh, by this agronomist, but he said that this might work and me being an experimental and adventurous kind of person, I decided to try it. Um, so what I did was a combination of borax and another product, um, which is very much like molasses, it's basically a sugar product, with the idea and the concept being that if we could put some sugar and some boron on strong enough that these insects would consume it and it would disrupt their digestive tract and kill them and not disrupt the plant's life. Um, unfortunately, uh, oh, and I should say, I did not treat this row as a control. Um, boy, I should have mentioned this in my videos to the other guy. But uh, I did not treat this row. The other seven rows I did treat, we'll go down and take a look at those now. Um, we'll talk a little more about it. So, uh, it did not work. These plants were already under a good deal of stress and a good deal of insect pressure. Um, and so when I put that boron on, it ended up killing the plants and, or at least killing back the leaves and stems of the plants. And that's okay. I knew that was a risk I was running. Um, but I just want to show, cause I want my YouTube channel to be fully transparent. I want people to understand that this um, battle, so to speak, to get your soil and plant health and nutritional health up in your soil uh, to where you can beat insects and pests, I just want to say that that is not an easy process. It takes some work and it takes some time. And um, if you're like me, sometimes you're willing to gamble uh, a try at something like this rather than spray toxins and poisons on your food. I am very opposed to spraying poisons on my food. And I looked into some organic pesticides uh, just to see, and um, they say spinosad, which is derived from a bacterium uh, that was discovered at an abandoned rum distillery in the Caribbean. Um, they say that is an effective organic pesticide. And so I looked down the list of all the things that kills, and it kills pretty much every kind of bug, insect, beetle, worm, fly, everything. And so all I could think was, well, if it kills all those things, then it probably has some toxicity to humans as well. And so uh, instead of putting anything poisonous on my soil and my plants, uh, being as I work so hard to keep poisons and toxins out of them, um, I did not want to do that. So I opted to try this other thing with the boron and uh, effectively molasses um, and failed. Uh, lost the battle on that. Um, and that's okay. Uh, it really sucks for me because this is a big part of my crop this year, and so I've lost a lot of my crop. Um, I may try and regrow some of these. I'm still undecided about how I'm going to manage this crop from here out. Uh, I may just uh, harvest out what I've got for tubers and wipe and replant with something different, or I may wipe and replant with more potatoes and try for a late season where insect pressures would be lower, at least that's uh, statistically what I'm told. Insect pressures are lower later in the season as far as Colorado potato bug goes. Um, but I just wanted to give an update on things, kind of show people what happened here. I'll give you some close-up of some of the plants. Uh, you can see where they died back uh, after the boron. I should say also we've had some, uh, some pretty heavy drought and pretty heavy uh, 
uh, water loss pressure. I was keeping uh, water levels up. I was irrigating pretty regularly and pretty heavily up until this infestation took over. And uh, after I tried the boron and I saw the plants dying back, I let up on irrigation. We did receive a quarter inch of rain uh, overnight and early this morning, uh, which is not anywhere near what was forecasted, but that happens sometimes. I don't want to get too long-winded here, but I do want to uh, I do want to just go over a few things. This is a mature Colorado potato bug. If you've never seen one, they have those stripes. You can see they have wings. They're able to fly. They're very mobile and crawl. And uh, from what I understand, their life cycle is basically they come out and they lay eggs on the undersides of leaves. Unfortunately, I don't have any leaves left to show you eggs on. Maybe in some of the, uh, the few remaining varieties, I can find some of those. But they lay eggs. Uh, those eggs hatch out, they turn into those larvae like I showed you in the beginning of this video. And those guys eat all the leaves and then they go back under the soil, they pupate, and they come back out in the spring like this and lay eggs again. And that cycle continues. So they overwinter in the soil. They're a very difficult pest to beat. Uh, they started out in Colorado back in the 1800s and they worked their way uh, east and north and south from Colorado. Um, primarily through potato fields. They used to only eat a, um, uh, another plant in the Solanaceum family. I think it's called uh, bullweed or something like that. Anyway, uh, they've discovered that they like potatoes and we as humans uh, keep propagating potatoes all over and so now they have another food source and uh, they're able to survive and reproduce on that food source as well. Um, so these are a very tough pest to beat. Um, if you're not familiar with the plant health pyramid, you have to get all the way to the top of the plant health pyramid triangle in order to beat uh, beetles and the, uh, the higher level pests that are able to digest more complex compounds. So uh, this is not an easy battle. It is always a struggle to get there. And obviously my soil is not there yet. And that's okay. Um, this is good feedback uh, for me and a good opportunity for other people who watch my channel to observe and learn without having a lot of uh, energy and time and cost into observing and learning. So uh, I did go back through here last night uh, and do a couple sample dig ups. You can see we were already forming some pretty decent sized tubers already. Um, so that's kind of exciting to see. Uh, I went back and looked in my chart. Uh, these were planted on May 11th and this is June, uh, July 6th now. So um, we're almost two months from planting and we've got tubers of this size already. Um, I am going to do some further assessment of the plants and we'll see if there's any life left to these plants under the soil. If there is, I may try and bring them back again for a late season grow out and harvest. Um, but we'll see how that goes. If not, I may uh, replant rows. I may just altogether abort some of the rows and carry on with my season. Um, I think that's most of the detailed information I wanted to cover other than I wanted to say that uh, definitely there is some uh, difference between varieties here as far as uh, susceptibility and not only that but also um, how much these plants like the soil. Um, these were doing really really well but now that everything else has died back these Colorado potato bugs have come over here and uh, and attacked and you can see that they are absolutely everywhere in here. Uh, we got larvae, we've got adults um, and I told you I would show you some uh, some eggs if I could find them. I don't know if there's gonna be any eggs in here. There may be. I think we're kinda of pretty much past the eggs phase which uh, which kinda of helps me think that uh, that advice about uh, about growing potatoes later in the season when the disease pressure is lower might be very accurate. Um, so that is a consideration as well. Anyway, these are Kennebec potatoes, and you can see these were rock, and these are well, they're up to my they're up to my hip. Yeah, so I, they're about three foot high, and probably almost three foot wide, and uh, these were really cranking. Um, and like I said, uh, no real insect pressure on them until all the other 
uh, plants die back in. And of course, obviously, this is the only food source left for these guys, and so here they are. Um, these also, you'll notice, these were in much better health. They took that boron application and they did not burn back on the leaves. So let's do a comparison here for those who are not as familiar with plant health. You can see, I mean, these leaves are very tattered and battered now from the Colorado potato bugs. But you can see that they were pretty healthy plants and they were growing pretty rapidly and pretty well. And then over here, uh, these guys, they were already under a lot of stress uh, from both insects and uh, drought and uh, many other pressures they did not take that boron as well so they were unable to buffer the excess boron and uh, if you don't know anything about boron excess boron can kill a plant basically thirst it to death very quickly um, so there's a balance there uh, and I was hoping that I could disrupt the digestive tract and kill out the Colorado potato bug and not disrupt the plants so obviously if these plants over here that died were at the health level that these were at, the boron would not have hurt them, or likely would not have hurt them. We don't know that for sure because they are different varieties. Um, but no, uh, no deal on that. So uh, I'm considering some other options. Uh, I had thought about going through and pulling all the drip lines out and going through with the flame weeder and flame weeding all of these areas down uh, if the plants are still alive underground and they'll regrow afterward, I could wipe out the Colorado potato bugs and their larvae that are all above ground with the flame weeder and then regrow behind that. It would also wipe out the weed population, so it would uh, get two birds stoned at once, as Ricky from Trailer Park Boys would say. <laughs> anyway, um, I just kind of wanted to give an update. I want to be transparent to my viewers. I want them to understand that, uh, that this... Uh, that learning how to grow truly healthy crops and getting your soil and nutrition right is not easy. Uh, even someone like me who's been practicing since 2013, uh, we're still not entirely there yet. We're definitely getting closer, but we're not there yet. Um, also interesting to note that uh, I believe I showed in an earlier video the end of the row here where we had leaks in the irrigation and we got a little more nutrition. Uh, once again, this end of the row uh, where this plant got a lot more nutrition, not anywhere near as damaged, although you can see they're on it now as it's their only food source left, but not anywhere near as damaged as the rest of that row going down. So um, just another good point of reference about how much different plants can be health-wise based on the nutrition available in the soil. Uh, so I think that pretty much covers everything I wanted to cover here. Um, I hope this helps someone. If you have any questions or comments, please do so down below. Um, if you like this video, please click like. If you would like to subscribe, uh, please do so. Uh, I thank all my viewers for watching my channel and all your support. And I have a whole bunch more videos i got to get out. I just don't know if I'm going to get time to do them right away. Um, let's see. One other thing I wanted to do, I wanted to go back. I did a sample dig on these Yukon gold potatoes last night one of these spots and there was quite a large tuber in here I just wanted to show that even though these plants are anywhere near finished uh, the tuber that I dug up was quite large where was that I gotta find the spot now oh I think it's right here yeah 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 there it is. Okay, so we're already forming some pretty good sized potatoes here. Um, so even if the Colorado potato bug does manage to wipe out uh, these plants, and I suspect, unless I can do something drastic about it very soon, that they will, uh, we're still going to pull off a decent harvest, and that's another gain of nutrition. Uh, you can go from seed to harvest, or in this case, tuber to harvest much faster in high nutrition than you can in conventional synthetic ferts and that sort of thing. So um, I hope this has helped someone um, and I hope that you guys will interact and ask questions and we can discuss this at a deeper level of detail. Thanks for watching the Pharmacy Seeds Network.